I woke up one morning and literally heard uh, um, heard that in my head and got a cup of coffee and still heard it and I thought, okay, I need, to, and that happened sometimes. So I got a guitar, went outside on the porch and I messed around like I do. And, and that day came up with the, with the second part that I liked too. And I thought, well, those are cool. And I thought, well, that's the second part. The second part goes. I tend to close my eyes and go somewhere and go, you know, I'm thinking about somebody or something or an event or whatever, and you're trying to play that. And I think people can feel that. I think it's palpable and tangible. You can focus on, you know, the ebb and flow of the, of the dynamics of the song that, that convey the emotion so that when this is done, somebody listens to it and goes, oh man, I can feel that. And that comes from these guys feeling it with me right now. My name's Kelly McCarty and I play bass. My name's Chris Burroughs and I'm a drummer slash percussionist. You always have to think you want to go somewhere else, and then you have to think, how do I get back to the first part? And that seemed to naturally lead back to part one. I've been working with Doug since 1991. When you've been working with someone for so long, it's just there's not a lot that really needs to be said between the two because you kind of already know where the other person's head is going to kind of be in terms of what they're looking for. I usually write instrumentals, and this was gonna be one of those. Mm -hmm. So you think, well, you can't just go part one, part two, part one, part two, part one, part two, because people will be done before you get to the, to the third round. So sometimes you need a part three, and that's usually the hardest part to find. The bass in a lot of bands and other types of music is really supposed to be uh, the link between the drums and whatever chordal instruments happening. So that's got to be, uh, you know, the bottom layer of the cake and everything's got to sit on top of it. I think you're trying to capture whatever the, the, the feel is. It could be how hard you're hitting something or how soft you're hitting something in terms of being able to play with dynamics. I like the, the mix of acoustics and electrics, the texture of them. you know, uh, green beans and chicken fried steak. You know, you don't want a big old plate of green beans, but the two together are nice. Acoustic guitars and electric guitars and different kinds of electric guitars and different kinds of amps create different sonic textures. So you're kind of trying to blend those. We tried this song and it was had more of a, sort of a, a country two-step kind of vibe to it. And so, we were trying to get it out of that. Doug didn't really want it to 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 be kind of like a like a double time two step kind of thing. And so putting upright on it kind of pushed it in that direction. And I don't think that's what Doug wanted. So we just decided to to switch on over and get more of a, a southern rock kind of vibe to it. If the three of us were playing with a with a vocalist, obviously we, then the three of us are accompanists of the vocalist. But it is much more a three-legged table. It's like everybody's got to take their turn and play. But you know, it's not like there's one quarterback and you know that kind of thing. So I thought about Doug and I are both big Led Zeppelin fans, and uh, so there was a particular groove that it, that I had remembered that had been on one of their songs. So I kind of recalled that a little bit and started kind of messing around with something in that vibe. Eventually, I thought the title is Autumn Road. It, it, uh, instrumental music for me is visual, um, and it's like um, non-representational painting is, is not literally about something because it doesn't necessarily look like any obvious object. You know, it's not a barn or a cat or whatever. This is kind of like what we would do back home a little bit mixed with a little of like 
you know, Southern flavor too. So this one's kind of, uh, makes me think of home. I'm from Kansas, so it's like prairie open vibes, but also just a little bit of kind of like Almond Brothers. So it's got that kind of Southern vibe on top of it as well. It sounded like autumn, you know, in a road in the fall that. And at the time, I, I'm not thinking anything about that. It's just a title, it doesn't mean much. Um, but maybe just that kind of vibe or energy. Uh, found a painting with, through a friend of mine that's a fine artist uh, that would be a good cover. I thought, you know, that people always say that songwriters and, and lyrical songwriters, oftentimes they think they know what they're writing about. And years later, people analyze them and go, oh, no, 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 no. Paul McCartney writing yesterday. And he said it was just a ditty. It didn't mean anything. But he lost his mother when he was a kid. And you know, that's the girl goes away in the song and you know that. I lost a good friend that I played with years ago uh, between the starting of the song and today. And one of a number of, of uh, buddies and band, you know, colleagues that have passed away in the last couple of years. So maybe that title sort of was a seasons of life kind of thing like that. So the third part that I thought would be in the middle and wound up at the end is really pretty simple. It was just the idea of going from this This doesn't ever really um, resolve to anything else. So in my head, I heard. Just this rising line with those chords going underneath it. I, I can't play all that on my guitar, but so tomorrow I'll overdub multiple guitar parts playing. And then a harmony to it, so it's on slide guitar and feel and imagining that is building the emotion of the ending of the song like that, that rising kind of swelling, you know, melody like that. The title came later, and I think, um, you know, just the exhilaration of driving in the fall and that, and, you know, the idea of, again, you know, if it's autumn, is you know, seasons of your life, that, you know, you don't have much left, so you better do what you want to do. So the excitement of that, I think, is that, that kind of exhilaration. <laughs>